You may be seated. I tell you what. In its purest, definitive of the Hebraic language, when we see the word dance, back in my days it is expressed the same way. It is cool. It is cool. And it is simply to twirl. That's what it means, school. In the days when someone had certain attributes that were perceived as fashionable, one would say, you're a cool man. And so that's the purest form of the Hebraic expression of dance, school, to twirl, to sing, to rejoice. And what a great privilege your grants unto Yisra, that we may gather in his spirit. Small in number, but I understand that. Yet yeah, we may dance before the presence of our Abba as Miriam, as they were brought forth out of the great bondage of Mizraim or Misrim, and how she took the timbrel in her hand. Hallelujah. And she began to dance and to sing. Five million people, as far as numerics of our expression. Yet as the sound of that timbre began to resonate throughout the confines of that community, that a hot in the distant corner, even in her great agonies of doubt, worration, and trying to figure out your scheme for the plan of the nation that he had bought, by his promises, his daba, his word of excellence unto Abraham, they began to dance and sing and shout. They began to twirl and the beauty and the men began to congregate and they began to dance, to twirl. And the tears began to flow because of his excellent power. For they knew that there was no deliverance but by the hand of Yah. And I speak to you, Yisrael, the nation of Yah's elect, according to his foreknowledge that he simply has chosen us all, not because we can offer up something that is excellent and acceptable in his sight. We are fragile, we are weak, and we are the possessors of nothing because it's one thing that pursues us daily, that is the Mavith, death. And this O oh, body shall rot and decay and take its rightful place back in the Erech, the land, the dust of the earth. Yet he has chosen by his recollection, his own determination, even before we were formed in the wounds of our Ima, this one is mine. There were two that having done no evil, nothing that is right, Isav and Yaakob, and he said, one I despise, and the other, I have a great affinity for him. As the old ones would say, I'm just glad that he knew me, and he has through his democracy that there can be no vote against it. He has elected me, and for that I shall cool, I shall cool. I shall dance, I shall twirl, I shall speak of the excellence of his might, his power. I shall testify of the riches of his beauty in Yorkshire Hamashiach, and for that I shall die. And I have no compunction for that, none whatsoever, Yisrael. So on this Shabbat, you that have joined us in your homes, the live stream may uh, enrich you on this Shabbat, on this time of rest. The beauty of his Ru'ach speaks to our minds today, our laba, our conscience, that it may shape our perception and concepts of him. You have this smorgasbord, smorgasbord of distorted ideas as to whom Yah is. And if the true messenger, the Nobi, would to stand before this nation, they would damn him and kill him. 
This is a nation, a mind that rejects truth. It is a mind that has been shaped by some of the most darkest uh, ideas uh, of imaginations. And that's why when y'all looked down upon at home, when he saw the wickedness, and he saw the corrupt, depraved mentality, and he saw what had constructed uh, the very images of his mind, Y'all said, I'm going to kill every damn last one of them. Damn them all, what he said. I'm going to kill mama. I'm going to kill daddy. And I will kill the damn rotten children as well. Oh, I know that's not palatable. Because Mr. Rick Warren of Saddleback Whorehouse in Texas, he doesn't talk like that. And this effeminate beast out of hell, Mr. Snake, that slithers in the minds of the people and that he prostitute the women there to lead them to every kind of extreme of whoredom to rob them because he's a rich bastard. He's a dog, Yisraya. This is not Yisraya. This is the foreign seed. That when Yisraya came out of Misrim, there were those that were of uh, what Yah says, there was a mixed multitude. And they began to murder. They began to call upon their damn gods. The spirit that was instituted in them as they were brought up in a house of bondage. And yet there was great liberty for them. And yet they despised the one that would feed them. It's almost like the old proverb, cutting off the hand that feeds you. And that's what they did, Yisrael. And they went forth in that same asinine, wicked nature as we see today. We see many pretenders and pastors. And they declare that I'm a Hebrew Israelite. They are the children of hell. It's one thing as I made the analogy. I'm going to teach today, preach. I will hollow, I will yell, I will do whatever it takes, Yisrael. As the old folks would say, this is Yah's day. And we're going to Shabbat in his Shabbat. It is the Shabbat home, a time of rest to Yisrael. And then when he become so enriched in our bosom, uh, that there's a passion in us that we don't have to hear the Torah, we rejoice greatly and dance and sing uh, before him. And then we have reached that stage of maturity, uh, and we have reached the wholeness, the pungin, the completion as to what the Torah does in the inward parts of an elect nation. As I made the analogy last night, I asked one, if you take a Dutch flathead cabbage seed, you take the Savar, you take the Jersey Wakefield, you take the Henderson Wakefield, you take the Chinese cabbage and you put 12 different cabbage seeds in your heart. And that is what y'all did to Yisrael as a nation, not segregating Yehuda from Ephraim. They were all wicked. They were criminals and they were guilty. I will show you why Yisrael, it is the institution of this uh, Abomination, this pigul, this shitkutz, joeba, this vile, depraved mind that makes one desolate. And we must understand the demonstrative of what is desolate. It is the ultimate conclusion of that which has been spoken, it shall be. And Yah is the one that shall operate and orchestrate every word that he has promised unto a people that defies him. And so you take all of these seeds, the mixture, and you scatter them, you put, you scatter them indiscriminately. You don't say, I'm going to pull out uh, Levi and drop them here in, in the land of Hesha. You don't say, I'm going to pull out Neptala and drop them here uh, in, in one state of the Caribbean. Uh, in the midst of his great agony, his ass, his anger that cannot be expressed by the terminology of man. He can only show us by his ruach, 
that the word is a living strength in our bosom. One on the dying bed and the testimony of a son, daughter, a mother caused them to rise out of the captivity of death and they are strengthened by that. And in the midst of his chanas, his anger, his hatred against a vile corrupt people, he put them in his yard, his right hand. He put them in his right hand. And he scattered them, he put them to the four corners of the earth. And the damn arrogancy of this nation here, the hubris mentality, well, all Yahuda is here, you are a damn liar. He scattered them abroad equally. And to say those are the continent of Africa, they are dogs and pig, you are a child of hell. He scattered them to this new foreign land, he scattered them in the continent of Africa, he scattered them throughout the islands of the sea, and he scattered them in equal parts. If you don't believe me, hypocrites, buy some seeds of the same family, whether it is broccoli, cabbages, 12 different kinds. They may appear different in color, they do. And scattered them in the Erech, go out to the soil, till it up, whereby the soil is fine. And then you put, tell me, if you can go among that and identify the Savoir cabbage seed from the Dutch flat hat, you cannot. Only Yah, that's why he is not leaving that man to redeem his house. When the hero with Micaiah stands and, and the shofar of Tizion blows, uh, then the Melechim shall go uh, and they shall thrash out the tear, the wicked ones. They shall thrust them out and they shall remove them because it's time for the harvest. I don't give a damn if you don't like it. I don't care if it doesn't concur with your doctrine. And then he's going to take them to the threshing floor before the throne of his judgment and say, well, David Yisrael, you fell me here, you nafal. See, not just you fell away. It was simply that by the power of my judgment, you nafal. The Sadiq man falleth seven times. It's simply you fell prostrate. You bowed and said, help me, Yah. Strengthen this is my constant prayer to Yah. I know that we are people that are frightened and, and we don't believe. I say, Yah, don't suffer me to bring shame upon your shore. And I say it all the time and he knows I mean he killed me. Take me out. I mean it. Kill me dead. I'd rather die. Kill me, Yah. This is no pretense. It's no hypocrisy. In this, I mean it. With everything, kill me and take me. And so we have the delusion of the mind that is coming by this dark agency of hell that works. It exudes. It promotes this self-identity, this exuberant arrogance of attitude. And that's why they are falling. Pride goes before a fall and they're falling into what what every kind of vile sin of corruption they're justifying things that are not based upon the principles of the Torah they're establishing their own what they think is sadiq. you understand in these corruptors of hell these perverters telling men you have five six seven wives Hell, most of them cannot support one wife and two child to satisfy their damn devious lusts. And they don't want the old women, they want the young ones. What in hell I want a 25-year-old woman for? That is not even comparable. A man that is nearly close to 60, then he is 24? Why would I want someone that young? What well, I will come on, my friend. These are lustful, wicked dogs of hell. And they have construed Torah to justify uh, their vile, filthy nature. 
They don't give a damn about me. They know of me. You believe me. They know about me. They just don't like me. Hallelujah. I don't like the way he talk. I know you don't. Because the whole Sefer, the book, the stroll, the writings deal with one thing. It is the sin of a nation of people whose mind is ho hoshach. It is filled with darkness. Tell me what our minds illuminate all the time. What is our imagination? How do we think? And y'all saw that the imagination of man was only rasha, it was ra, evil, only continuously. It was no time for his mind to rest. And everything in this vile, wicked nation that we live in, it is only evil continuously. Your mind is flooded. Your thoughts are overbearing. You're brought into this imprisonment of all kinds of uh, philosophies uh, of men that these damn dirty liars are saying, Yah, are speaking to them. That's what they say. They are liars. It is the God of this world that speaks to them. Yah has spoken one time. He has spoken about the revelation of Yahshua. And if you don't receive that, then damn you all. Oh, I want to define desolation before I continue today. This abomination. When a mind is so depraved, when it inhabits dark thoughts that conjure up, that it comes forth from the depth of the river of one's belly, you know that's not your Yisraya. Leads one into the path of every kind of deceit. And as Daniel Yah saw the vision that it was time for the interpretation, not for that season, but for the Akharit, for the last days. And the book of the straw, the writing, shall be opened in the mind of Yisrael. And Yah will raise up messengers, prophets, and those that are strong in the knowledge of the Torah, and they shall make the vision plain. And that's what we need today. Men that make it plain and simple. That even a child, a babe, a taf, a taf can understand. Even the ones that are held in the arm can understand the dance. And they will begin to dance and twirl and cool you. Hell, when I was in the world, I did not go to the dungeons of darkness to stand and look. I went to show off my fine threads that I thought were fine and to twist my heels into the dark obliviousness of hell. You understand? I did not give a damn who was watching me. I wanted them to. And so that's what I did. And yet I believe it unto you because the mind is so dark. That's what this matter is about. When truly that's the offering uh, unto Yah is not represented the way that He commands us, that we do not offer unto Him what He commands. And that our minds are so blinded, every, it is so blinded we cannot see beyond uh, our peripheral. That there is no living, there is no living knowledge in our minds. There must be a living substance in order for something to be alive. The testimony of Yahshua does not make us lively. The Torah of Yah, we do not delight in it. His statutes, His wisdom, we don't delight in anything that Yah speaks unto us. And by that, it is a, a sign that there is no living substance of the power of Yahshua in us. We're dead. And the reason we're dead, because we have trespassed in our damn wicked nature. We love sin. We love everything that is corrupt and vile. And so our nature in the back, our nature is so vile, it has been, uh, it has been established and built by dark deceptions of our own mind. 
It is one thing that is certain that the mind of your Yoshua HaMashiach, it leads us into the power of the living Torah. His mind is equal with the Abba. It is the power of the Ruach, of the witness of this living Torah that caused us to come alive. And you got this little group here that say that they are the identity of Yah's people. You got this one and that one. Well, what I find in the Torah there was a segregation or a separation between Yahuda and Ephraim. You understand? So if all in America are Yehuda, Yehuda, Benjamin, those tribes, uh, uh, they stuck together. Then why are we in the damn dismal shape that we're in? Tell me, Yisra'ya, why is that? They don't want to answer that and how they construe the meaning of words and define them the way they want to. It is almost like an ignoramus. It is almost like I've watched little clips of those that here, Mr. Barack Hussein Obama, he is a jurist, he is a constitutional lawyer. He understands the concepts and the precepts by judicial prudence against case tried. To study the, the architect of cases, uh, to understand the most powerful words uh, in the midst of that context, uh, to manipulate the minds of the hearer, to alter the very, uh, the very outcome of the trial. You understand? And you see these individuals that do not even have a third grade education. They are as ignorant as hell. Uh, and then they will say, well, he, 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 he doesn't know constitution. Hell, you don't know it. You don't even know the amendments. You don't know what has been amended. You are as ignorant as hell. And this man cum nadi from Harvard, and you are a third grade educated fool. You're going to tell him he doesn't understand the Constitution, the proudness. You're a damn fool, man. You're stupid. It's the student telling Yah what should be done. And that's the mindset that is established today. And so there is no, there is no ovation. That's why Yisrael, Yah, when they gather in the country, there is nothing uh, out of the loins that exude the power of Yah. You got whole houses uh, that will say, because we danced before Yah, oh, they learned that from a Christian whole house. Would tell me, you damn fool, where did Miriam learn her dancing? And where did Yisra'ya, where did Moshe learn his song? We're going to sing. Uh, and they see the song of Moshe. Where did he learn that? Where did his song come from? This is a stupid, arrogant, robust generation. The world has taught us well, hasn't it? It has taught us how to be satish. Yah says, my people are sottish. They are stupid as hell. I don't give a damn about your excellence of your enterprise or your expertise. It cannot add one day to your life. Only this adds life. He that loves life and will see tough days, let him first of all reframe his faith from evil. Let there be no malice, no mischievous actions or deeds uh, in one's loins. Hell, you can be the master of any type of study. It means nothing before you. Unless we master this. We live it. We walk it. We abide in it. It is our substance. It is our joy. It is our sorrow when we sin. We don't have anything, Yisra'ya. And I say it poignantly and point blank. I don't alter my speech for no one. Whether you like me or not, it makes no difference. I want to continue in the path. And I am hoping, which doubtfully, that I will conclude this on this Shabbat concerning the abomination that make a desolation. Are we not the children of Yahweh, we are the Bain? He called us Bain. We are the little ones that need instruction consistently and continuously. That's how he addresses us. You do not give the child the ABCs uh, 
of the alphabetical system and they learn it overnight. It must be ingrained in their minds. It must be done over and over and over again to the point that it is refined. And then when they want to get to P, they don't have to say A, B, C, E, A, J, C. What come out the P? A, B, C, E, M, D, H, 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 L, M, N, O, P, L, M, N, O, P, Q, Q, Q. They don't have to do it like that. It becomes an attachment to them. Notice what the Torah was for Yisrael. Yeah, this is what you're attached to. We are attached to every kind of damnable wicked thing there is. And we don't give up on our vile nature, Yisrael. Yeah. That's why there is no offering unto Yah. That's why there is no pouring out of our bosom unto Almighty Yahweh. That's why there is no pleasure to offer unto Him the offering that is pleasing that He takes pleasure in. And when that daily offering is held back out of the bed, Israel, then you know that there is uh, the power and the works of Tu'ibad, some of the most vilest, some of the most convoluted wickedness that can be expressed by man, that it denounces every aspect of Torah. It defies it. It damns it. It rejects it. It will not be, it cannot be corrected by the Torah of Yah. No more than Yehuda when he denied Yeshua. He could not be brought back to the fold. He could not be retrieved. And there are those that we think we're going to retrieve your fool. We're going to die in their wickedness, their sins, their iniquity. I'm going to define desolation by Yah's expression. How about that? But before I do that, I want to read as I always do as we continue the process of this teaching, uh, the mark or the uth of this behemoth of the beast, a nature of a beast. And that's why Yah says unto Adam, he said, I want you to till the soil because there is nothing like learning from the very constitution of Yah than tilling the soil and you being a, of the husband tree to watch the animals and to watch the birth uh, and to till the soil and to see the inborn diseases and the things that are so sorrow you think that they're beneficial and then they cause chaotic destructiveness upon everything you plant. And so he said, man, I want you to work, and from the sweat of your poor name, of your perfect aura of my Torah, at the end of the day, you lift your hands, and the sweat of your brows will pour down, and you offer unto me the oblation that is accepted, whereby your mind will not be uh, deluded and overtaken by the dark elements of the earth, but that you will pursue what I've commanded you, uh, with loyalty, you will be excited about it. Until the wicked one rose up and he deceived and said, the day that you defy him and say, damn you and your creation, you can try to dress it up. That's what this beast of hell said. We may not use that expression to say that, but any time our minds say, well, I know he said that, but... You said unto the Most High, damn you. I shut my mind away from your instructions. You will not tell me. It's like a child, the mother, the Ema has birth. And when the child get of a certain age, look at the mother and say, I don't give a damn what you say. Oh, he may not say it that way. But he, re he recoils, he rebels, and he fights. For rebellion is, is as the chapta, uh, of the sin of what? Witchcraft. Witchcraft. What was the thing that deluded the mind of Galusia? Oh, ever foolish Galusia, who hath bewitched your mind that you should not obey the truth? You should not walk in Torah. 
And so everything the world does is to bewitch and to establish the prominency of the throne of darkness. We are drinking out of a vile cup of death. Not just out of the religious whole house of Christian or Judaism or Hinduism or nationalism or Islam. It makes no difference or more science or any of that. Or these false fashions of Hebrew like Israelites, even that. That's why you are commanded, there must be a messenger, there must be a man. And he must stand in the auspice of that office with strength. Yaseva, Ja'ul commanded, Moshe commanded, he must have the authority to serve, to give instruction by the command of Omaria. I want to begin here in the book of Gilead, a revelation. I will read this quickly. As Yokohanan, as he saw this most menacing, desolate beast of hell, he said, first of all, she was dressed in a way that was acceptable. She was dressed, she was adorned in things that were palatable or acceptable to the eyes. Revelation 17, 4. He says, in this religious prostitute, and we see that these are the colors of uh, Yisrael. Let no one tell you that this is Catholicism. Uh, I can show you in the book, all right? He says that, uh, and all that has ever been among Yisrael, it was this uh, infatuation of idolatrous uh, worship. To establish their idols, uh, the gulu, the images of their mind. That's what Yisrael has always done. That's why Yah says, when, uh, when I reward you for your sins... When you go into the goyim, don't learn their ways. And he kept them as a nation of people. That those that were of the Uma of Levi, they could open up the wisdom of knowledge of Torah. And then they began to allow the philosophy uh, and the spirit of those that thought they had a more excellent knowledge of them. Uh, and they were simply bought off as many today. You think T.D. the snake fat dog is going to talk about sin and, and homosexuality and all those butch bull daggers he have there and all of those faggots he had there. You tell me Mr. Gritting hosting the devil, hosting that, that damn wicked child of hell. You think he's going to uproot the faggots and the vile nature of the people in the midst of that? You think he's going to mention sin? The man said he doesn't even mention sin. Because the damn whole whorehouse would have to clean out. Let me come. You let TDJ come. Let me come for one hour. Let me come for an hour. I will not get out of the place alive. I know that. That's all right. So she arrayed herself in these precious things. These, uh, and she had this uh, cup. It was golden, it was precious uh, in her hand, and it was malay, it was full. And not only was it full, but it was a cup that was consecrated. When something is consecrated, it is in the fullness of its strength and power. It has not been diluted. And so this vile nature today is, is consecrated. When the heart drinks from that, there is no remedy. And that's why you find those that are becoming more adamant. And they become hardened in their ways. And they become hardened toward Yah. This is a nation here. That is a vile heart nation. Can I show an example? This morning as I browse through some of the readings or writings of a particular newspaper. There appeared this Jezebel. Her name you may know of her. She was there in jail. In Italy. Her name is Miss Amanda Knott. She and two other male companions butchered this woman. There was a preponderance of evidence that this slutty whore did that. Now if that had been Shakisha out of the hood, she'd have rotted there in the jail cells of the confines of Italy. But because there were the resources, there's been millions. And to give to this campaign affiliate. 
And for them having personal contact with the ambassadors, they were able, uh, to the power of their wealth, uh, to alter the judgment of the sleazy slut. You understand, Shanika Bakonka, out of the hood, the heifer would still be in jail. Y'all calls us a heifer, that's all right. We're a backslidden heifer. And so this Jezebel has been freed. And this is what they dilute the mind of those uh, that are looking uh, for some kind of drama. For some kind of excitement. Things that are trivial. The article says, as there has been a tremendous war to do the writings of a book for the sleazy whore. She was guaranteed four million dollars. This is the insatiable, unsatisfying attitude of a damn wicked nation that will pay a damn murderous slut when they let this little damn dog down here at, in Atlanta, let one of the little heifers from the west side of Atlanta, whose name was Shabaka Ratonka, let her do that and see what would happen and see where the damn pro bono would come. Yet this damn slut, she has risen to zenith of, uh, of identity and wealth. Hell, she's not living like Shabonka, trying to strive and scrape for her little babies. And this damn hellish, hideous nation. And then we participate in her mind, delusion, inspiration. You're sick in your damn mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know how to say it any other way. It is the power of that which is filthy, where people will spend millions. Believe me. It's one thing about a rich man. He's not going to spend a million unless he's going to make 10 million. You think they're going to give LeBron James 25, 17 million to bounce a damn ball and they not make 100 million? You're a damn fool. And they're going to maintain the right of his life all of their lives. And they're going to make money when he's dead. Just like Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, uh, that Dolly Parton. I saw in the paper she's, she is set to become uh, rich. Hell, the Jezebel, the false half is already rich. She's set to make millions of her death. Of her death. This is a world that makes money off the death. And it makes money all for you, Yisrael. Yahweh. Our minds are not lively with the testimony of Yeshua. Then we buy those things. We don't buy the truth. We don't buy understanding. We don't buy the wisdom of Yah and Selenat. But we buy every kind of vile, corrupt thing there is. Our minds have been trying to do that. We must destroy it. He said, I saw this vile thing decked with this cup. It was full of abomination. It was full of ghoul. It was full of some of the most detestable, vile things uh, of depravity uh, that really cannot be expressed uh, in the annals uh, of the vocabulary uh, of the linguists or the linguistics of man. And the only thing I can say to give you some kind of identity of it, uh, it is abominable. It is vile. That they go beyond of sacrificing their babies and their minds unto the devious works of hell. There is no conscience of the creator. He is void from their mind. He is darkened. He is obliterated. He is brought out of every facet of their life. Some, if the mind is that way, it's a sick mind. It's beyond sick. It's beyond sick, Yisrael. And so everything that caused the conscience to even ponder Yah, it is blotted out. So the only word he could use was pechul. It is shikutz, it is filthy, it is vile, it is depraved, it is ill. It is a passion of such darkness that only Yah can demonstrate that in his anger. He says, and not only was that a part of that mixture, that drink, it was consecrated and it was, uh, it was enhanced by a consecration of that which is nida, filthy. 
and the only expressions in his ru'ak that he could give us of the filthiness of that, of that cup, the nida, he could only say it's like a filthy minister rag of a woman. It's vile, it's unclean, it stinks, it's dirty. He says that it's full of nida, it's filthy, it stinks, it's corrupt. The odor is so vile that one cannot, one cannot breathe. And the stench that goes before the nostrils of Yah, that's why Daniel Yah wrote, we will get to that in the book of Daniel Yah, because the oblations, the daily oblations are not offered to Yah. And then when we offer this, this most damnable pseudotype offering, it is false. It is not real. It is not from the wellspring of life. It's not from a living well. It's out of this disposition that really has disdain for Yah and has no true compassion for Him. It's full of this vile nida, this filthiness, and our minds are, our minds are the coffin of every kind of damn filthy thing it is. It amazes me that you hear young immature individuals um, and they have the excellence of a knowledge of the Torah. They know everything and they don't know a damn thing. Uh, and they will say, well, Yah spoke to me. You're a damn liar. I heard that 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Then he spoke to that one as well. No, uh, it has been transfused into your mind uh, by words of others you have heard. Uh, and that's what you have deducted from it, man. You're a damn liar. If Yah speaks to you, his voice, if he has to open his voice to you, something is wrong. He speaks about the power of his testimony. He said, damn this wicked nation. I've spoken, I've given, I've brought them out. I've put them in bondage and showed them the excellence of my hand. And they don't hear a damn thing. It's almost like an avat. He constantly reprove his son, his daughter. And he says, to hell with you. I throw my hands up. And I will see the old ones do that in the day. And when they threw their hands up, they meant that. They meant it. They meant it. Hallelujah. He said there were every kind of idolatrous immorality, every kind of filth that spewed from her cup because she was of the nature of that cup consisted of the spirit. It was a spirit of fornication which was zana. It was a spirit that practiced prostitution. Yah says unto Yisrael, do not sell your daughters unto prostitution unless the whole land the erech, the whole earth when y'all use the word erech or land he is not just talking about just a little niche of land he's talking about the whole the earth the fullness the islands of the sea when he uses this word erech he said unless the land become polluted and full of sin and then I must show the excellent of my strength is this land full of every kind of vile thing it is our daughters and our sons are slow soul into the slavery of every kind of wicked vile thing there is Yisrael they are given and they are led like sheep to the slaughter they have no conscience that death awaits them we have no concept of death and the power of death. But a man's mind is separated by the practice, the continuous and the willingness of hata'a, sin. It is your iniquity that has separated you from me. And it is the hata'a, the sin of Yisrael that has withholden the tough things, the excellent things, the revelation, the knowledge. We have been taught to practice defiance against him. And so this vile religious spirit, this system of her commerce, her mercantile, the system of this exuberant emotional gyration, as one would say, quote, I feel good, unquote. My religion makes me feel good, unquote. I just feel good. And this most damnable superstitious belief and the deities have held this vile order of the mind of Yisraya and the nations whereby it defies Yah. There is no compassion for truth. The mark 
of the beast. And that billy goat out there doesn't give a damn about the little ones that have been birthed by him. That tremendous Angus bull we have over here, all that has been dropped by his seed, he's going to drop more. And if one of his sons raises up to try to dethrone him, he will gore him to death. He will kill him. And there is no doubt about it. And that's what we do as a nation. We will kill. We will destroy. We will kill. We will destroy the very beauty of the insight of Yah in, in us. We will destroy the image of his Hamashiach. And we began to paint uh, our own images. And Yah says they're wicked and they're continuously wicked. He says in Revelation 17, 5, and upon our forehead, or her mesachem, he said there was a name of Sham or Shim. It was Hatab, it was written. He says she was known as Lats, mystery. She was full of mystery. You get someone give you something to drink, you say, What is that? They say, Drink it, just taste it. It is the concoction that I've made up to help you, your cold or your fever. Just drink it. Well, tell me what it is. Don't worry about it. She's full of mystery. There's always something new. There's always something coming up. She's full of mystery. Uh, she is Bethel. The Ra, not the God. Allah. She is the one that is abundant, many more. There, there's an extremity to her. She has a lot of people. She is Bethel. The minds of the nations are, are confused. They're creating these damn beasts, their gods, and their damn pagan Lord Jesus Christ. Is, uh, the damn Christos, you are a damn liar. It's amazing that these damn hypocrites... They call themselves Hebrews, and they would change their name to Yokohanan, uh, to, to, to Siphania, and yet they call on a damn Latin pagan deity of hell. You are silly as hell, man. They will call on a Christo, the anointed one. Oh, I believe the word, what it means, one that has been anointed, but there's only one that has been anointed by Yah, and his name is Hamashiach. He is anointed one of Yah. Yeah. And these damn hypocrites, they can see the validity of changing their name to a, a, an origin of the Hebraic name. And yet they call upon a damn wicked Baal, a damn Lord, and a damn Lord Jesus, um, and a damn image that has been created because that is Jesus Christ. And they buy that. Well, that's not Jesus Christ. He's a black man. Uh, he's just that damn image, fool. Uh, you're a liar. I will tell you the pose. I got a call. I, has, I haven't even discussed this with you. I got a call from a news reporter here in South Carolina at the University of South Carolina. And so he says to me, there is one by the name of David Holman. I don't even know. Has been passing out information about you. And I want to know if we can do an article uh, visit you uh, uh, and write an article. I say, first of all, my friend, I know the agenda of the media. People are looking for something that is sensational. And for this drama, I say, man, I, you just call me. And I've been out fencing today. I've been cutting posts. And I don't have time for no drama or no sensationalism. If that's what you're looking for, you find someone that can contribute to that. I say, because I don't, I will not participate in that. But if you want something that is serious, because I'm going to take the heels off his feet if he comes. You understand? You understand? So I said, how did you find out about me? He said, there's a person by the name of David Holman. I don't know David. And he passes out material about you here at the University of South Carolina. And I am a student, uh, and this is part of my graduate study, and I must do this. Uh, and so please, uh, it's not sensationalism. Uh, I'm not looking for drama. I want to do an honest story. I say, if you want to be honest, I'll find out. I say, then uh, you give me a call when I have time. These are the days. Uh, then I'll let you know, all right? We're not about that, Yisraya. We're not about the sensationalism. Yah's not trying to save. He's going to save all. He's going to save kul, kul. The full body, the whole, that is true Yisra'ya, he's going to save them all. He's going to save all Yisra'ya. You getting on the damn street corner and crying out, that's not going to save one. Your Shua poured out of his bosom the greatness of Yas Ahava. And yet at the, at the term or at the call of his death or his demise, there was not one of them that stood with him. They all went and did their own damn thing. 
But he had to restore Yisraya and the beauty of it all. I don't give a damn what our trials are. Yah is going to restore all oh, the entire the kabura, the house bear Yisraya as one. No Yahuda, no Ephraim. Yisraya, Yah is the one that prevails. He's going to restore his whole house. And there is no man that's going to do that. That's why he has put, he has scattered us. He's going to draw us back in the bosom of Yahshua HaMashiach. And then our voices shall rise from the gates of Yerushalayim. Uh, the rebirth of Yerushalayim. Uh, not the city where the, where the Ruach uh, of Sodom and uh, Egypt is there. He's going, to, he's going to purge and cleanse. Uh, and he's going to establish the power of that city in the bosom of Yisrael. Uh, where his Shalom uh, is going to be inspired. Where his identity shall be forever all armed. They're not going to invite me to their meetings. There are folks that contact me when I tell them to listen. They don't listen anymore. And they uh, never hear from them again. These men that have come here and said I've been rough when they called. These were perverts. Where are they now? I had a precious ach to call me the other day from from Alabama, Montgomery. We had a friend in Montgomery, didn't we? We went there for a convocation one year. Spent $10,000, money we didn't have, took us a year to say that. And where is my friend now? And so here, same man that said, this man is a prophet. I said, I've never said that. Because I just watched him because I know that they're going to falter. I know men very well. I've been around a little bit, you understand? I was in the world kicking it, okay? You understand? And so he calls me the other day. I found you in the church of God in Christ. And so after we conversated, I said, I said this to him. And I'm not a humorous man. I don't like laughter. I said, my Ak, if you don't call me back, you take some time to look at that site. I said, if you don't call me back, I'm coming down there and put my stick on your back. He said, oh, <laughs> I said, all right, call me back. 99.9% .9 of the times they never call me back. The abomination that maketh desolate. Her cup, her identity, her spirit is sorrow. Was not Hashatan the most sorrow creature? He was a behemoth, a beast in the garden. Was he not? It means that he was a behemoth because it was his own inspiration that had been exalted against Yah. And we are beasts. What our minds began to exude us and establish us as one that is great and that we have something. We don't have anything but worms in our bodies that are ready when we die to eat us up. And within one hour of your death, the blood begins to pour into your back. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. And you let that old thing, dirty thing stay there for a day. The maggots are already crawling in that thing, the skin worms. Hallelujah. It is filthy. It is the cold drum of every kind of filth, everything that is wicked and vile. That's why we must be cleansed. How about the Torah of Yah? And they are cleansed, and they were cleansed. We are made tahor, pure by the Torah of Yah. No other way. I saw this vile thing, and she is the mother of harlot, uh, an abomination. She is the mother of pigul, of everything that is vile and vile, of everything that is in the earth. Are we not earthen vessels? Are we not the vessels of Yah? In every great house, there are all kinds of vessels. Is there not? Are there vessels of gold? Vessels of silver? Is there not vessels of earth? We are earthy vessels. In every house. His house is not just uh, the bed Yisraya. When Yah made his creation, he knew that it was tough. Everything that he has made. It baffles the mind of man to see the excellence of lights uh, and things that they know not of. I was reading out of this vile, polluted thing they call the scientific mind. Uh, that there are over one billion planets. These are fools in this nation. They are damn fools, Yisraya. Their educational systems have made them damn fools. It has made them damn fools. And if there were billions of nations uh, or planets, how could they count them? 
It is a summation by, uh, by a, certain, uh, a certain measurement of, uh, of the spear of Yah. And then you multiply that by so many variums. Uh, and then you conclude that there are billions. Well, if there are billions, there are hundreds of billions. And there are trillions of, of planets. I know that we're not the only thing that Yah has made. And that's why we Yisrael Yah, when, when we're serenaded before the creation of Yah, I don't care with the Melachim, even Micaiah, he's going to look and say, Ma, 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 Yah, you know how to do all things. We are so belligerent and so twisted in our damn logics. We don't understand the magnitude of Yah because uh, he's been creating this little damn thing that, that we think is a mind. Uh, and it's just a call drum of some of the most damnable wickedness that there is. He's been created by our own thought process. We have not known him. We have not Yah or Yah. When we experience him, uh, there's a great rejoicing. No one has to prime you. No one. She's the mother of every kind of filterness. And what Yah does, he opens the eyes of one. By the name of Daniel Daniel And he shows him a tremendous sign of this season, this time, in the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel Yah. Daniel chapter 12, verse 11. And he shows him something that wants the hearts, the love. That's where the offering of man comes from, from the heart. We sing the song, create in me, oh yeah, the clean heart. Come in me, my heart, your home, not this muscle that contracts and retracts to cause blood to flow to our bodies, but this leba. That everything he writes is the concept of our lives. Our life is based upon the writings because he knows all things. And Daniel, Yah, when the message was revealed for the latter time by the Melach as he brought it forth, because the Melach, the Melachim, they are the messengers of Yah. They encamped about those that fear Yah, Yisrael. Yah, we fear Yah. We have a Yira, a Yira Yare. It is a fear that is of great reverence. It is one that exudes and exalt Yah. It is one that fears. It fears because there's safety there. When the, when a child, uh, I said to this little child the other day, she had done something to him. And so when she came in, he had reciprocated that. And so when she came to me, uh, she knows I love her. She knows that. She, she knows that. And so when I called her, I said, come here, little girl. Uh, her email was standing there. And then she came, uh, and yet there was a trembling in her little voice, in her little hands. Uh, and because of that, of course, I wasn't going to spank her or anything. Uh, she says, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I did it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then the tears began to weep. And I say, you do that again. And of course, when she left, she went with expression. Come on. That is the year of you. That we're glad when he corrects us. We rejoice in that. We rejoice when he corrects us. His musa, his correction, his chastening. You understand? To rid us of this damn vile uh, incubator of every wicked thing that one can even consider. You understand? So we rejoice when he does that. We rejoice. Hallelujah. And so when she left me, she was ready to play and dance and, and go do exercise and do push-ups. She was ready. And so when he does that, we're ready to continue in the path. That he has ordained. So here is one by the name of Daniel Al, Daniel Yah, Daniel 11, 12, 11. He gives us an understanding of the season and time when there is no pure offering from the heart of Yisrael. And when our minds are blinded of the riches and the power of the Torah, that there is a disdain for it. And he tells us at this time there shall be a manifestation of that which is most vile. And it shall make us desolate. I want to define desolation in Yah's grammatics for us in his speech to show us. 
And then we will move from there. But he says in Daniel 12, 11, And from the time that the daily Zabach, the daily offering, and that was the offering of the slaughter, or the offering of the sacrifice unto Yah, the animal, that uh, entail Yah's judgment, uh, that caused a reprieval, or that which was accepted by Yah. That's why we must constantly offer unto Yah, to the Yah, to the Yah, to the Yah, for Yahshua, the Lamb of Yisrael. We began to to the Yah. It's an excellent voice of thanksgiving. We know that we yada. It's a thankfulness of singing and dancing and shouting unto Yah Yisrael. And from the time that the daily offering, the Zabach, shall be sore, shall be taken away, or it shall depart, it shall be a void in our lives when we have no energy or no desire, no passion to berach, to bow in his presence, to esteem him. When our minds are so damn muttered and we are so lazy in our ruach, that we don't even have the energy to sit before Yah for two hours. But hell, we can go to Walmart for five, ten hours. And yet we get sleep in his presence. And I say to you all, don't get sleep in the presence of Yah with me, all right? I don't give a damn who you are. You don't get sleep in hell walking down the aisles of Walmart. Now you go to bed. Hallelujah. Mama, that's all right. You, you, you leave it in the field long enough. I'm talking to these young ones. How old are you, Mama? Say it again. Talk so I can hear you. I know what you said. See, even the strength of a verse. See, Yah allows that to be among us that we may be cognizant of his strength. See, three scores and ten, and by the measure of his strength he has given her. That's all right. Yeah. I don't give a damn what Benjamin is saying over there in Demona. They're going to die, and Benjamin is going to die. For it is appointed unto man once to die. If his son died, and then, then after that the Mishpat him, the Mishpat. I don't give a damn if you're vegan. I don't give a damn if you're royous. You're going to die, I will, man. You're going to die. They can dilute your damn twisted mind all you want to. Huh? I recall one from Yahweh ben Yahweh, this man he would call all the time. And sometimes I'm coming out of the field, you in the fields here in Jefferson, South Carolina in July, it's 102 in the field, you've worked there for five hours, you're not ready to talk. And so he thought he could call me at any time of the day, I said, man, come on, listen, man. He's sitting in his air-conditioned complex there at SUNY Hospital there in New York, and he will call me all the time. And he wanted to compare what I say against Yahweh bin Yahweh. I said, Yahweh bin Yahweh is a liar and he is going to die. Oh no, he's going to say, I tell you what, you listen to Yah's messenger, the man is going to die. And the way to get rid of the man, I said, send me an offering, man. Oh, I've got to send this to Yahweh, I've got to send this to the organ. I say, man, okay, no, send me an offering. Help this. I say, are you being blessed? By listening, oh yeah, oh yeah. And of course, Yahweh bin Yahweh died, didn't he? I haven't heard back from this fellow. I hope you're listening, my friend. By some chance, your guy went back to the website. Hallelujah. So there are these delusional doctrines of hell. They call Birmin Abba. They call him Mashiach. He's a damn fleshly, dirty creature. Yoshua did not have four or five wives. She had Ichat. 
He was betrothed unto the assembly of Israel. These are dirty, wicked men. And the Torah does not give them stipulation. He has suffered things. He suffered many things for Israel. And these men that call themselves Hebrews, hell, they got babies scattered all over. Hell, they don't take care of them. How are they going to take care of five wives? They don't even want to work. They pimp the wives like some kind of big daddy snapback pimp. And the women are breaking their arse. He got them all in one house. She's hearing the groaning of this one in that bedroom that is wicked. That is foul. It is insane. It is not of you And these are these big belly hogs. They got guts like dogs. They're fat. They're overweight. They're out of shape. And I'm a man that is of natural strength. And I know my ability is being abated. I can't hell. I can't handle this one. They're full of their lust. I don't take it back. And they rob and rape the minds of the bath of Tizayon, just like Hashatan. You take a damn dirty bastard like that down in Texas, they call him Israel Hawkins. He's a hawk. 27 wives, and this vile, old, decrepit bastard. I call them bastards because they are the slip of the beast of hell. They don't know Yah. And he wants, and in the midst of that dirty whole house, there is a segregation because he is a Caucasian, you understand? But he loves the little black, the daughters of the diasporas from the islands. And their mothers are so gullible, they bring them and they give this damn dirty beast their children. You should know Moshe, there is only one in his love song, Shira Shiram. There was only one. I got all these concubines, but baby, there ain't one like you. My heart, my life is for you. And these are the same dirty beasts will say, well, we should eat vegan and raw and no meat. And Yah commanded man through his Torah what meats to eat. And yet they will not. He gave man a an isha. There is nothing more beautiful than a wife. You, you daughters, if you don't have a husband, don't sell yourself for a damn nickel, two dollar Big belly hulk that doesn't even love ya. You don't sell yourself for that. You wait on ya. He will withhold no tough thing from them that walk halach yasha, that walk straight upright before him. You don't sell yourself, man, just for some kind of sexual encounter. And hell, after it finishes, it wasn't even worth the wait. That's a fact. You beautify yourself with the ruach of ya. And Yeshua HaMashiach. I got to get moving if I'm going to finish. It's all, this is all part of the most vilest concepts of the mind of man. That cause them, man, woman, not to rely upon Yah. And these are impersonators. They are false. They have come in through the night of darkness. The mind of this nation. That it is the mind of darkness. That's why they love entertainment. That's why they love folly. That's why they love frivolous and foolish things. That's why they entertain all the time. And these demons of hell, they have slithered in, they have come in uh, through the very nature or the instrument of flesh, uh, and they inspire the wicked mind. And so we got these false delusions uh, of what is of Yah, and then we don't have the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach, uh, and we don't know how to pick what is right uh, and what is wrong. And so we are digesting this nida. From this cup and it's clogging the arteries. It's clogging our perception, our ability to, to understand our eye and our ears, and our ears, our eyes are closed. And we are blinded people and you have blind guides leading the blind. And they're falling into every kind of deceit of dark delusion that one could imagine. That's why our minds fall in some of the most filthiest things that one can imagine. Don't sit here like hypocrites and you, my friend, because I don't see you. Don't tell me it's not so. Our thoughts are based upon some of the most vilest of things. And sometimes you got to look and see who's looking where Yah sees it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He sees everything. You're not going to get by. You may try. But you taint not, as Granny would say, you taint not get around. Taint not. Taint not. 
You's are not going to get around. Give a damn who you are. It's a generation that identifies more with the flesh than the creator. They exude the flesh. All flesh. I don't give a damn what all flesh is as grass. For in this ba ba, it gives it the right name, almost like buzzard. In this baza, in this baza, in this flesh dwelleth or live, no tough thing. Nothing. We must have the mind of Yeshua HaMashiach to dispel and to eradicate our minds from some of these most vile, abominable attacks that dwells in us. And they wait as our Zachin Yaramiyah taught us concerning the zira, see that lie dormant for year after year after year. And then when the first flourish of rain, it begins to rise up. They are filthy fish. They are a type of a catfish that it lies dormant in the earth, uh, especially in places uh, in the Serengeti plains, like in Africa, on that continent. And then when the monsoon come, immediately they rise to life. They multiply by the millions. They burrow down back in the ground. And it is a process of hibernation until the rain comes again. It's almost like one pretending that they do not uh, uh, operate in those activities uh, until, uh, until they start saying, let's roll, girl. Come on, boys. Uh, let's hit it. And you find something rising up out of him. I would have never thought she would have did that. Oh, that's not him. Oh, oh my son would never do that, mama. You're gullible. You're silly. But you believe that my son did. Oh, man, you believe her son did that. Oh, but not my son. Mm -mm. My, my, my son is good boy. Oh, my boy. He, no, no, he knows better. He does? Hell, daddy, what are you doing? How would he know better if you don't know better? No pretense. Daniel Yah said, I saw this, that the daily time of the Zabach shall be taken away. And when shall, it shall be removed. He says here in Daniel Yah 12, 11, and he says, then the Shechutz, this most vile, abominable, idolatrous manifestation arises. When the abomination that makes, it creates, it makes desolate. Shemin. Set up. He tells us that there should be a period of time for three and a half years. He goes on to tell us, blessed are they that comes to the 45th day of that time. Where there's a process of purging and eradicating. And at that time, only there should be an offering a cathedra of great praises that flows into the Hashemah of Omariya. What is this abomination that make it desolate? Listen, Yisrael, yeah, there's nothing in the book that written that y'all does not open up unto those that fear him. Oh, we know not the day of the coming of Yeshua HaMashiach, only the Abba knows. He's inviting us to a wedding, is he not? You tell me that you're invited to a wedding uh, and he will not cause the herald to cry aloud for preparation that you will be ready. Uh, this is the damn asinine thinking uh, and the folly of man. He's not inviting us. He's not going to tell us the date. The herald will sound. Make sure you all put that message on after this. And I want the folks to hear that the marriage feast. All right. Hallelujah. You don't prepare for a wedding. And don't tell the people when the wedding is. Only the bride and the bridegroom knows. What day you want to get married? She says to me, what's the day? I said, August 13. Just, I don't know why we picked that day. Then have two flat nickels to rub together. Broke and still broke. Hallelujah. But I'm rich though. Very rich. I'm rich. Very rich. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he gives us a time frame. As Yoshua HaMashiach 
was in the belly of the earth three days and three nights. There shall be no sign given but the sign of your hand. There is no sign given unto Yisraya but what is Khattab, what has been inscribed, what has been written in the stroll of life. You all say there is something that is so vile. There is a mind that has been constituted by some of the most vile of depravity and ills against me. It has shaped this mentality that resists me, that offer up every kind of oblation unto hell, even as Hoshotan said to Yahshua, when he was tried, baffled, and buffeted by him. He says, if you will bow down and show credence unto me, I show you all the kingdoms of the earth in a moment of time. He said, if you bow down and you share, give credence to me, you worship me. He said, oh, I promise you, all shall be yours. You will be my Mashiach and I will be the mighty one that does all things according to my mandate. And you are sure his only reply could be, get Behind the Torah HaShatan. For it is Khattab. It is written. It is inscribed in the bosom of Yisra'ya. Yeah. And him only. Do we shecha. To show ablation. It is the power that living Torah Yahshua. That teaches us. How to please Yah. In all things Yisra'ya. And when the mind rejects truth. It is a mind that is bewitched. And when a mind is bewitched, it will not offer unto Yah the ablations, the offerings that Yah commands. You have those that say that the Torah is done away with. No, he said, I will in those days in the Akhirith and the Akhirith began when Yahshua said it is finished. He said, I will hatab, I will write my, he did not say his mitzvah, he says my Torah. He, my instructions, my guidance, my will, my purpose, my counsel in the bosom, in the shaft, in the heart and the bar of Yisrael. He's going to write it there. That's why Yahshua said when the Ruach HaKadosh come, he will not come to testify himself. But he will testify what is written. But it's already been spoken. I am the living Torah of Yah. I am the word that has been made among man to, to show him the power and the riches we have in flesh. Only if Yah. Yah, why? Why this process? You know why? Because of our nature. And we have seen this abomination of desolation. We have seen this abomination rise in our hearts. It starts in a subtle way. In a small, miniature amount. And as we began to grow, we become more asinine and more hardened. The little things we do, we think that there is no, that's no offense to Yah, but it is, Yisra'ya. It is an offense. Well, uh, I don't have to say, forgive me, Yah. It's wrong. The little fox that destroy the vines. And so we think that there is no repercussion behind that. And then the more you do that, it begins uh, to formulate in our minds, in our system, just like arson. Just a little bit at a time. And over a period of time, it began to dismantle, disrupt, to destroy the eternal flow uh, uh, of man's body. It began to destroy cells. It began to destroy the most vital nutrition uh, in the blood system. Uh, that when the blood flows through your body, it's not taking, uh, it's not taking life to the cell for the cells to grow. And then you find yourself getting weak. And if we do not have the blood, if we are not taking, uh, drinking, Yahshua says, uh, if you want to be one that is uh, of my nature, then uh, you must eat my flesh uh, and you must drink my blood uh, or you have no part of me. Uh, and these damn heathens today, uh, they will call that and say that's barbaric, that is heathenistic type of, of a religious uh, construct because they're damn fools, they don't know. He spoke in a way that he did not intend for the natural carnal mind to understand. But he gave revelation unto those, unto the gift of men. He made some Shulishiam. He made some the Nabi. He made some the bearers of the messengers of the Torah of Yah. He made some that will be Reach. They will counsel and teach us in the power of Yah's truth. And he made some of those men. They were Murray to teach. For what? 
until we all come to the knowledge, the da'at, the da'um, the discernment of what is Yah, of the truth. And nobody can discern truth today. Hallelujah. I hear some of the craziest things. And of course, I know how to deal with these people. They just don't know how to deal with me. Hallelujah. I know how to deal with them. I hear some of the most craziest doctrines. I say, go back to the site. We have a message on this. Search that and listen to that. Because they think that they have a knowledge that supersedes anyone. So stupid. So stupid. It's all vanity. Shaft. It's empty. With much knowledge come agony and mourning and groaning. Just recline to the place Yah has positioned you. And whatever you feed, you eat it. Don't be hasty for nothing. There are things that are too, too profound for me. And I'm not going to try to move beyond the realm that Yah has ordained me to move beyond. As it be declared to you, I am the messenger. That's what Hawkins said, didn't he? I will, my friend. Everyone today on the street corner where they are, they're prophets, are they not? They're so stupid. These young men are gullible. They're very gullible, Yisraya. They have not been taught. And no one is going to tell them anything. So he said, this abomination that makes it desolate. He said, there's a period of time. And Yah is gi- he has given us this span of time. He has given us almost a day from the Akhari. From the day of your Shur Hamashir giving up the Ruach. He's given us almost a day to prepare our hearts and our minds. Before we enter into this little... This little uh, minute, or what do you call that when it's uh, very small, beyond visual? Uh, not micro, there's another one for that, not micro. Come on, you all know what it is. I know what it is. No, it's not miniature. Uh, what is it? Mm. I know the term. <laughs> what is it? It's so small, they can even do machines and, and create tools that they put in your bloodstream that they can really go in. Nano. All right. Something that's nano. So small. You can even identify it. That's why we as a nation, if we get the nano out of our own eyes, we will see clearly how to help Israel. And these boastful swines today, they are full of wickedness. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Especially the young ones. I have the young ones call me and I, have, I try to rip them a new arse because they think that they are wise. Hallelujah. Yeah. And they think they have, they will tell you, I don't listen to nobody. That's your problem. Don't listen to me then. Why are you listening to me? If anything, you create something to show people how wrong I am. Let me move quickly. I want to, I want to show us the gravity of what desolation, shomim, is Yisraya. I want to show us that, this tremendous devastation. Turn quickly to Weyira Leviticus. I want to move through this somewhat, uh, not haste, but expeditiously with some pace. And I want to bring out, I want you to understand what Yah tells us, this desolation of our mind and what it does and what it creates in us. There is an abomination. And that's why this system is set up to destroy. It is not to nurture your children. It is to destroy your children. And it begins with the Ima and the Avat to destroy and to bring them under the bondage of the control of the masters of darkness of Hashatan. Whereby there is no conscience, no concept of Yah, there is no thought of Yah. And everything that this wicked world does today, does it keep our minds away from Yah? Our jobs keep us so tired we have no time for Torah. Our situations and circumstances keep us so binded. There is no time in our home for ablation. Did you all hear the precious ark that called from Florida? Yes, last night. He says, only my wife. And I said, come on, man, my wife and I for many years it was only us. 
Come on, look at this house. At one time it was filled every pill that this wall would have been torn. I'm looking at this today. But that does not cause me to rescind. Hallelujah. You're not going to get by here. This house was for Malay. It was running over. To the Yah, to the Yah, to the Yah for your sure to He said in all things, Hallelujah. we give to them. I am not despondent. I am not dismayed. I am not sad. I don't wonder why. I simply give. To die. Hallelujah. Because I. Yeah, die. Yeah. What is your desolation? Is there anything in the book that gives us some kind of gravity? Or the components of Yah's desolation? His shomim. His shomana. Devastating destruction. This abomination Devastates our mind, devastates our loyalty, our love for you. It destroys every fiber of any type of sensitivity to you that we become so hardened that nothing penetrates us at all. We do not shemech. We do not hear with the faithful complicity of obedience to obey it. To carry it out and do it. We don't do that. Everyone is seeking their own today. And we're not seeking the things of Yah. And Yah says to Yisrael, Yah, he says, I want you to utter to my people. This is a warning and a threatening. When they go into the lands whereby I promise their forefather Abraham and Arab Yitzchak and Yahu shall the riches of Abraham flow. Not only did he say Abraham would be the Avat of God all nations, he said also that Ishmael will be the father of a great nation as well, Yisrael. And so he said, you want them of my devastation, of desolation. And that is when Yah allowed this abomination, this nida, the most filthiest of vilest of things, uh, to inundate, to fill our minds, to fill us up with some of the most insidious I mean works against Yah, that our mind work against Yah, our thoughts work against Yah, our actions work against Yah. You know that there's desolation there. You're not going to hold that together. I don't give a damn how you try. It's not going to be held together. It's going to burst at the seam, and the vile stench of that shall flow, and the stench of that aroma shall be the vile stench in the nostrils of Yah. And he shall turn his head. He shall turn his head. He shall mock a nation. And he said at this time, only the pure in heart shall survive. Only that's coming out of this great. You're going to know Yisra'ya then. We're going to find out if it's those hanging on the corners and those in New York and Atlanta and Georgia, those there in Russia. We're going to find out Yisra'ya. We will find out soon. He says in the book of uh, uh, we hear in Leviticus 26, 21. I'm going to move expediently. Yah says to Yisraya, and if you should walk heri or contrary to me, uh, you know what contrary is, don't you? My parent, my mother, my grandmother would say, don't, don't be contrary, boy. Don't be contrary, boy. Contrary is when one has a hostile uh, intent. The encounter is hostile. Yah says, 
I'm warning you, Yisrael, if you walk contrary with your hostel, and our minds are, 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 are nurtured with hostility against you. If someone says, I love you, and you say, I don't feel like saying that today. Someone say, give me a hug, you don't feel like embracing. It is contrary to the Torah of Yah. We have opportunity to talk unto all men, especially Yisrael. You know that's contrary. He said, when your mind began to walk contrary, when you began to walk contrary to my Torah, I know what's there. there is, there's a vile nature. It is unclean. And the only way I can eradicate the land, that's why when Yah will grant unto Yisrael a passage to the land, he would kill them off. He would destroy the heathens. He would uproot them, eradicate them, mama, daddy, babies, and all. He would kill them. He's not that way. Are we that gullible? He went down in the Sodom and Gomorrah, he killed everybody. He brought out Lot, a Sadiq man, and then his daughters, they have become so corrupt in a land, in a city, so vile, so mischievous, and so wicked, they couldn't even identify what was pure. And he had become so associated with that, he could not even hear the voice of Yah. His oblations were not offered up like Eob. He offered up his offerings unto your Taylor. It was abominable that even Lot, that even the Melechim had to grab him and pull him out of the filth. He was so muddled in that filth that they literally had to pull him out, saying, we can't do a damn thing, man, until you get out. There's nothing. You all cannot unleash his ash, his manpower upon this nation until you get out. Hallelujah. He's not going to do anything until Yisrael, not this damn false rapture, until we're out, until our minds are out of this world, until our hearts are placed in his hands, until our desire and our passion is to please him. That's why the world is constantly creating and you new, renew things and new things, uh, fashions and thoughts and concepts. Uh, and new th all the time it's doing that. Uh, he says here, and if you shall walk contrary or carry uh, to me, uh, he said, and not shemach me. You don't listen to me. Uh, he said, I will bring seven times more, more plagues. Uh, he said that the plagues are not just uh, the famine. Uh, he said, but I'm going to take my hand. I'm going to wound you. I'm going to slay you. I'm going to break you like. I break a matchstick. Uh, Leviticus 26, 21. He said, I'm going to bring seven times more plagues upon you according to what? Your hata, uh, your sins, your blatant defiance of the Torah. I'm going to bring that upon you. Yah says in verse 22, he said, and I will also send the behema or chai, the one that has life and power. That's what a beast is. And the word high is the same as beast, vegetation. It is all high. It is all of the same definitive. It is Yah's speech. It is not man's. It is Yah's speech. He said, I'm going to send the beasts among you. He said, first of all, they are going to rob. Isn't that what the mark of the beast does? The mind of the beast, it robs us of the Torah delight. And we began to become contrary. And so when Yah asked for the oblation, you say to hell with that. I want to dance my buttocks off. I want to shake my ass. I want to live wickedly. That's how we respond. Yah says the beast Yarrah is not Hashatan. Was he not a Liar and a thief. He was a murderer, a liar, and a thief from the beginning. Why? 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 Because he did not abide in the Torah. The instructions of Yah. Where a mind doesn't abide in the instructions of Yah. It is one of the most abominable people. It is one of the most vile cesspool. So minds think. Some of the most wretched, filthy things constantly. He said, in the beast, this behemoth, this life substance of power, it shall, he says, it shall, uh, it shall rob, it's going to take everything, it shall rob you. 
It shall make you childless. You shall be barren. You will miscarry. We get excited about Yah today and all of a sudden a problem or a situation arises. There is no enthusiasm about Yah. Everywhere when Yah places a word, he, he means what he says. That's why we need men that are mastering the Torah. When I say that they have time to truly spend time with Yah, not watching damn television and eating like a damn pig. You understand? And this wicked generation, they will make sure that T.D. Jakes wear two, three thousand dollar suits. $5,000 shoes, $10,000, that's his everyday play watch, $10,000. $100,000 dollars watches are what he dressed in. That's wicked. That's not even wicked. And he robbed those little baths there. The bath of Tizion, the ignorant. They're all educated and they, and they get the shouting. He got a big fat faggot on the organ. Come on, walk up. And that's what they do. And these are the elitist women. They are educated. And women that have what they call careers. Hell, you have a job, woman. Sit down. That's all you have. I will come on, man. You have not created one damn thing. Man, you have not pardoned one damn thing. Stop it. I'd rather have your shoe, I'd rather have your shoe uh, than silver or gold. Yeah. Hell, I worked at a corporation, an uneducated high school dropout, and I made more money than folks with education. You, I know what I am saying. I don't boast in that. But God gives you favor with man. Hell, I don't care what doors try to shut. They cannot be shut. When y'all say I shut the door, it's time you to get up out of here, boy. What I do, sell everything, give it all up, and then uh, 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 don't even pick up your cloak. Just follow me. Yes, I will, Yah. Marching, marching, marching in the name of Yahshua. Y'all hear that, girlies? Y'all like that? Marching in the name of Yahshua. Hamushia, we're marching in the name of Yahshua. We're marching in the name of Yahshua. I sing that in the dining hall. We're marching in the name of Yahshua. Hamushia. Come on, yeah. we're marching in the name of Yahshua. Hamushia. We're marching in the name of Yahshua. We're marching in the name of Yahshua. Listen, your left, right, your left, your left. Right, your left, oh, we marching in the name of Yahshua. We marching in the name of Yahshua. Marching in the name of Yahshua. You see, at the table, they asked me, Papi, you gonna sing? Oh, Papi, sing today. I said, uh, we, we've kind of broken our sequence, oh, Papi. Yeah, Barak, I'm gone. You see, that's what they asked me. He does too. Papi, sing that song. And of course, when we were singing every day, he was the first one ready. Papa, you gonna sing today? Yeah, well, don't sing, Papa. I'm ready. You take too long. See, that's what they say. Hallelujah. Your says it is because your sins, because of your heart, your sins. He said, I'm gonna send the beast among you, and they're going to rob you of your children. We have no children today. They're given to a beast system. They're given to Hallward, Hollywood. Their minds are shaped by one of the most devious uh, uh, ac actions or devious uh, sources uh, that one could ever ponder. They shape your sons and your daughters to be faggots and butch bull daggers. They shape their minds, not even the mind of a beast. You know a man, a boy that calls himself a woman, you know that's not a beast mind. I got too many, we got too many billy goats out there. The billy goats are running, uh, they're not running no other billy goats. You go over there with those rams, they're not running rams. I will, man. You go over there when that big old Amos, Angus bull, when we first got him, he was what, five, six hundred pounds? He says, I'm a man, now nah, I'm a thousand pounds or better. Don't mess with me, boys. He said, I'm the man of this house. You're not ready. And he will knock them down. He's on the top cow here. I'm the alpha. You're not going to do a thing until my course is finished. And then when it's finished, then it's your time. Hallelujah. 
He said, I will cause the beasts of the nature, the sons and daughters have been shot down. The, the babies are having babies, uh, and yet they are depraved. The daughters are having daughters uh, and sons, and their minds uh, are given over unto the devious powers of hell. Uh, Yah says, uh, from the womb, the wicked go astray at birth. Uh, and their sons and daughters are not walking according to the Torah of Yah, because mama hasn't taught them a damn thing. Her mind has been shaped by this abominable activities that defy Yah, and is making death the souls of the nephesh of the sons and their daughters. They're full of death. They have no conscience of death. They will kill. Boom, 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 baby. We got a price to pay. Oh, have I forgotten you, Ark? We will deal with you in the time to come, all right? Hallelujah. And that teaching on Khatve uh, Imad, someone posted, said, Thank you. And this, oh, thank you, Reach. We that want truth, we will rejoice in truth. We don't give a damn about you. Nothing excites us. Nothing at all, Yisra'ya. He says, you shall be shachol, you shall be robbed of your children. He says, and they shall be destroyed, or I shall destroy a charath, destroy your riches, your cattle. And he said, I will make a few in number. And he says, and your highway, uh, it shall be shame. Your direct, the way that you walk, your highway. Yah says that there shall be a highway there for Yisra'ya. And only Yisra'ya, those that are set apart, only those that are filled with the Ruach shall be on that highway. And every now and then, uh, Yeshua said, you see, wayfaring man, one that's traveling, uh, he's lonely, he is thirsty. And then when he encounters you, you're a breath of fresh air to him. You bring life, your living water. It's your words are refreshing uh, that that one can press on in that way that Yah has ordained. But yet our highways, uh, they're desolate. Uh, the way our minds travel, the way our ideas uh, are, are, are conjured up, or the way they're created in our minds, uh, it is the highway of death. Uh, and every kind of uh, every kind of vile thing there is is not the highway of Yah. It's not the direct. If you're of Yah, it's not that way. It's not the direct, the way we should walk, the way we should abide in, the way that we should strive. It's not that. We're striving in a way that is mischievous. It's full of wickedness. It's full of unclean things. It's full of those things that, that are vile, Yisra'ya. This is what Yah says. There shall be few. You're not going to have riches. You're going to have much. We're eating like cows, are we not? And yet we're not full. We're eating like cows. We look like cows, men and women. Let's get real. And yet we're not full. We eat and we're never satisfied. Our minds think of things, even in this country. Don't let a woman get pregnant. She's never heard of Mississippi mud ice cream, but if she hears of it, she wants some Mississippi mud. She wants every kind of damn crazy thing there is, Yisra'ya. But what about the Ahot that loves Yah more than her, that is in the booties or uh, one of the Messiah warriors that know the name of Yah and extol it with more excellence than you, Yisra'ya, and that strive to walk in Yah's pleasure? Can she uh, desire Mississippi mud? She simply wants some Sukkuma weekend Ugale because that's all she knows. And you see how the world has created in our minds, in our conscience, that which is so vile that it's not even of Yah. That it's not even for the purpose of Yah. Not even for our health. Not even for our bodies to be the healthy things that they should. That we will have the energy and the fortitude, the strength to offer unto Yah that which is proper. Our sons are lost sedes. Our daughters have no energy. And we have no energy for nothing at all. Our mothers, the shiftless, have no energy. Come on. You can hate me, but you know this preacher's laying it down today. This is what makes us desolate, empty. It's said an abomination. It is the vile things that we have uh, established our Mishram, a government to govern our minds and to rule us, uh, whereby there is no offering of Yah. Everything we do, we should, it should create an offering or offering of Torah in our bosom to Yah. You get up and say, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Mama, Hallelujah. That should be the constant breath of our loins. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, you walk to the car and all of a sudden the tears begin to flow. Sometimes I get crazy like that most of the time. I cry a lot. You just don't see me crying here. Hallelujah. You don't cry, you just don't know me. I cry a lot. I hear things. I sense things. As the Torah talks to me, I cry a lot. Hallelujah. And that's the truth. Kara, the tears. 
of his excellencies too. Hallelujah. Moving quickly, Yareh 26, Yareh, Leviticus 26, 23. Yah says, and if you, he's talking to us, is he not? He says, and if you will not be reformed, if you will not be your shah, we're a rebellious nation. He says, if you will not be chastened, if you will not be disciplined, if you will not receive the instruction, that's what your shah is. He said, if you will not be reformed by me, are we going to allow Yah to reform us? Yah says, if you will not be reformed by me, by these things, Yah says, you don't want it to be, but I will walk carry, I will walk contrary, and will walk contrary to me. Verse 24, Yah says, then I will also walk carry, I will walk contrary to you. Do we want Yah to be hostile toward us? He said, I will walk contrary to you. And Yah says, I will knock her. As my grandmother would say, I will knock you down, boy. Yah says, I will strike you. I will kill you, your babies. I will kill your daddy. Yah says, I will knock her. He said, I will punish you yet seven times for your vile sins. You hear of the identity and the nationalism and all of that. Let's deal with the sins of Yah's people. The abomination that make it desolate. Hashatan was a murderer. He was a liar and a thief from the beginning. Because his mind did not dwell. He did not meditate day and night on the Torah, the statutes, the mitzvah of Almighty Yah. And the enemy has done a mighty job to keep our minds. For meditating. We don't think about the tub of Yah. When I think of the excellence of the tub of Yah and all he has done for me. Then there's a cry that should resonate from my bosom. We shall praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. That's why those old folks in them whole houses. They could sing songs like that all day. Same, same lyrics. They didn't change it up. Because the more they would sing it. The more it would become real. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. That's all they were saying. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, 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 oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, 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 oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, mama will cry from the back. She would say, hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah! That's what they would do. Come on, Israel! And this damn wicked world has taken the abolition, the offering from us. We rise in the morning with Kala. We curse the very day that we were born. Like Eob. We curse everything. We're mad at Yah. We're angry. We're hostile. We don't say, Yah, I bless you for this day. And told her. The old folks, they knew about that. They did. Get up on their knees. When they didn't know how to get on their knees. You would see Papa crying when you didn't see Papa cry. He would sit there and the tears would flow silently. And mama understood his agony too. Hallelujah. Because they were ekat. His expression of his love was not this, this fictitious pseudo thing we call love today. That's driven by this 
unsatiable desire and passion of what we call sex. It wasn't that way. And when they came together for the season of time, it was exciting and enjoyable. He loved it, and she did too. She was filled to the brim to the thrill. Are you damn hypocrites? You don't, come on, I've been married 35 years. So don't tell me. I've been around long enough, okay? Yours says, I will walk contrary to you because you, your mind and, and, and two minds, if they're not in the same agreement, they can agree, can how can two walk together unless they walk in the same agreement? Yah says, you're contrary to me, I'm contrary to you. You are hostile to, toward me, you don't, I, I will show you my hostility. This is Yah's hostility. That this is the hostility Yah has against this mind. You must see it in the spiritual dynamics, also in the natural. He's dealing with, are we the natural people of Yah? Were we brought into the covenant of Yah? Is he a ruach? Is he a spirit? Is Yah spirit? So the covenant is based upon the spiritual, spiritual principles of Almighty Yah. He spoke the covenant. It was not that we had dialogue, Abraham with him, and said, I want this. Hold, hold, hold up, Most High. There's a piece of land over there. I've heard about it. Not all the land they call. Let's call it Israel. It wasn't that way. It was a spiritual approach and he spoke it. And the only way you can understand that he manifested. So the only way we're going to understand the spiritual dynamics of his Shomim desolation. Let us look on the Father. All right. Leviticus 26, 25. Yah says, I will bring a harab, a sword upon you. What is the sword of Yah? It is his Torah. He said, I will bring a sword upon you. Uh, he says that the wicked, uh, Yah used the wicked as his sword, Yisraeah. He said, I will bring a sword upon you that shall avenge the vengeance of my covenant, of my Brit. And when you are gathered together within your cities, uh, Yah says, I will send the debris or the pestilence upon you, among you. And you shall be delivered. You shall be nothan delivered, permitted into the hands of your Oyeb. Who's going to permit that? Yah is. He says, I'm going to deliver you into the hands of your Oyeb. And we know what an Oyeb is. It is one that is hostile against the one that one opposes. And if we oppose Yah, we are hostile. We are contrary to him. And we oppose, we oppose his instructions. We don't want to hear him. We get upset. We get mad. Why? That is the, that is the, 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 the senility or the, the mind being, uh, being destroyed by this abomination, this vile pegul, uh, this conscience that is uh, malignant with all kinds of cancerous, uh, vile, uh, intense. And the nature of that mind, it is against Yah. You don't want to hear what he says. You don't want Yah to instruct you. You don't want Yah to show us the right way. And so you give credence unto this, this religious whore. America is a religious spirit. She's offering the same thing as T.D. Jakes, Biddy Hinn, or Roberts, and all these serpents of hell. Oh, it is the law of liberty. Hell, we have no liberty. We're bound. We're in bondage. Even those that think that they are free, they are not free. They're bound. They're born to master you at court's time. They got to get right back at it. They leave their babies to some damn stranger to raise them. He says to you, Baptist Zion, to show you the beauty of a woman. As Shirak says, there's nothing more precious than a woman who has a well-ordered home. She has a Torah from her ish. And she calls that Torah to be administrated. And look at what this nation has done. To even the subjects of the nation and those that were brought in on the boats of the diaspora. Look what it has done. You don't even, they, these religious whores, we want, we're doing this for the families. You don't even know what a, what a mishpah is. You don't even know what an umma is. These damn liars. They don't give a damn about your sons and daughters. They care about daughter getting a job and bringing them tithes and offerings. Oh, T.D. Jakes doesn't give a damn about those people. He would spend a few dollars to make sure that, look, we're doing this, creating something. But he got his henchmen in place where they're making money. And the people are not making a damn thing. You think that devil Osteen down there that lives in an $11 million house? What? What does a man do in a house like that? Please tell me. The bathroom is meant for two things. Bathe, wash yourself, and to drop some of the most distasteful things from one's loins out into the... Okay. I don't care if your Kamal is gold-plated. It still receives the same thing. 
And when mom is pregnant, she goes, This is a stupid bastard. Got a bed wires from here 10 feet long for what? Stupid. Got chandeliers for a million dollars. What? You, you are a stupid jackass. And you got those baths where you could take that and create enterprise, community for the people. They live, learn how to love each other. T.D. Jakes doesn't give a damn about nobody. These bastards don't know how to love. Let nobody kid you. They're bastards. And no one is going to stop me from calling them that. Shirak says they are the bastards slip. They know not the commands of Yah. And create enterprise for the people that the mothers can stay home. He live among them simple just like they live. You see, if he did that, they would find out he's a big fat faggot. Just like his friend Eddie the Long Daddy Dog Long and all these bastards. You say what you want to. I'm not going to protect these pigs. Well, we should not see that. We should, Shaul says, uh, I want to tell you something. He said, I hear of one that has his father's wife. He said, if I come and this be so, I've heard about it. He said, I'm going to tear this mother, this whole house up. He said, you all rejoice in that one should be given over unto hell for the destruction of his flesh. Damn these pigs. You say, damn them. They have no bearing in my heart when it comes to the concept of Yah. I will not let them impede that, or I will not identify them as messengers of Yah. You go in these whole houses, the women are silly, they're laden, and they're full of sin. You thump the drums one or two times. You got your sweet faggot up there twisting on those organ pads. They will dance their soul, their nephesh into hell. They will twist, and the more the creeping dollar dogs like Creflo Dollar, you got that bastard down there in Louisiana, what's his name? They bought a $15,000 dog, $15,000 dog. That creep of a beast, Thompson, robbing these women. They're husbandless. They have no sense of affection. And these bastards play on their minds and play on their, on their emotion and play on their heart. It's wrong, Yisra'ya. If there's anything, the, 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 the men, the ish of Tizayan should protect the daughters uh, and say, you damn wolf, you're not coming in on my ish. Sure, come on, Achot, get back. He's not trying to lip in bed with her. He's not trying to overtake her. She see the beauty of his strength and the beauty of his honor. And he calls her to maturate and make herself a woman that uh, when the men see in the marketplace, they will know how about her garment. Uh, I'm going to teach on that, Yisra'ya. There were garments for the virgin, there were garments for, for the widow, there were garments for the married women. Not the damn things that the world teaches us uh, that signify marriage. Yeah. Oh, you saw the young daughter that you knew not to touch her. Yeah. You turned your head, man. And so the woman began to understand. She makes herself ready for that strong beast of a man. She sees the labor of his back. She sees the sweat of his face. She will say, that's a man. And her heart weeps. And because she labors at the Torah of truth before Yah, he said, Dora will not withhold this excellent thing from you. A prudent wife is a gift from Yah. He said, give your wife man. Hell, you've had sex all your life. You've had sex. It hasn't produced a wife. Hallelujah. I don't give a damn if you don't love me. I don't give a damn if you don't rejoice. Hallelujah. She always makes herself ready. Are we the woman of Yah? And you're sure? Then what are we doing? Making ourselves ready. Prepare. Cool. Cool. Preparing. Making ourselves ready. Looking in the mirror. Polishing ourselves daily for the coming of Yahshua HaMashiach. That's what we do, Yisra'ya. The world has taught you wrong. And the world has established this abomination, this filthy offering. So women feel like if they offer this stuff up, come on, baby. That's going to attract now. Not a man. Say nothing to that. You are a man. Can I tell you what a man is? It is one. Not those in the similitude of what a man <coughs> it is one that has the ruach of Yah Yahshua his ruach he is the law of his conscience his mind that he may guard the house of Yah well and the bath of desire and say ah you don't touch boy 
I would kill you. <laughs> I'll take you out. That's what he says. Hallelujah. That's a man. Anything else is a boy. A little boy. It's a boy. It's a boy. Not a man. These fools want five, six wives. Hell, the players in the streets got five, six. They go into Yabonka tonight. And Shanonka the next night. And Shabuka one night. Shubuka got two by him, two by Willie, Willie Big Daddy Slice, Slice uh, Baby. She got one by uh, Slim Daddy John, roll back. Talk to me. And then when she gets crazy, he goes over there to Sudana Yaka. Oh, I'm a Hebrew. And she got two by uh, Willie back Big Daddy, the Slayer. She got one by Bonafide Bone Crusher, the, the big dog. And she doesn't know who the other one is by. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is the truth. Can I finish up here? I am. Sometimes I get a little uh, thrown off the path, but I'll get back. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, says you walk contrary, I will walk contrary. This is what shall you incur. Leviticus 26, 26. Yah says, and when I have Sheba, when I have broken the staff, and Yah's going to Sheba, he's going to break your staff violently. When he's Sheba, it is in a violent way. What is the staff? He said, I will break the staff of your bread. What do we eat on? What is the thing that nourishes our minds daily? It is our lust and our sins. It is our wickedness, isn't it? It is what the world offers. This is what he is talking about here. He's talking about the staff or the thing uh, uh, of the spirit that you delight in that gives you life. He said, I'm going to break the staff of your lechem. I'm going to break that strong pillar of your bread. Um, he said, and then ten women uh, shall bake your bread and one oven. Now he's talking about Ephraim. He's talking about the house of Ephraim, uh, that everyone, every tribe is on his own, doing his own thing. Uh, everyone is baking their own bread. We don't want the lechem of your Shur HaMashiach. We don't want the bread. That's why he fed the man in the wilderness. Uh, and they say, what is this? Matter was, what is this? Now he gives unto us the bread of life. You're sure we know what we're eating. Yeah. We know what we're eating. And so we got these ten tribes. They're concocting their own damn doctrine. Uh, we got the tribe of Asher, the tribe of Joseph, the tribe of Dan. Uh, the tri all of them with their own doctrine. Uh, everybody got the right way to say this, the right way to do this. Uh, and they're baking their own bread. What do you do with bread? You bake it to feed, don't you? You bake bread to feed someone. So everybody feeding everybody some of their sliced uh, wicked bread. Isn't that what Hashatan did? He said, Go sure, I'm a shiv, you be the son of Yah. I command thee, stone, take that which is corrupt uh, and that which has no life and make it bread. Make it bread. You have the power to do it. He said, I am the bread. Man uh, lives by the power of this testimony. Yes. That's what we live by. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Command it to be made bread. You see, you got every tribe. Baking bread and feeding bread. Every one of the house of Israel, every tribe. Every tribe got a doctrine. Neptali, all of them. They all got doctrine. Simeon, everyone got doctrine. Everyone. And they can tell you, you're, you're, you're the tribe of Simeon. You're the tribe, oh, that's a Gerite. I know, ah, that's a Gerite. And that's how silly they are. That's how silly. I want some repercussions. Invite me to your gatherings. Do that. Tell them to invite me. Let me come to speak. I will deal with the sin of his people. He said, everyone is baking bread in their own oven, oven uh, and they shall deliver your bread again by weight. Uh, they're going to see if you're going to sell out, you're going to receive that doctrine, you're going to become complicit to what they say. Yeah? He said, and you shall eat. And he said, you're not going to be shabbat, you're not going to be satisfied, you're not going to be full. We're hearing all kinds of teachings and doctrines, uh, but yet there's a void in us. We're empty, we can't get full, Yisrael. The nutrition is not there. We're not being satiated. We're not satisfied. We're not fulfilled. Not at all. We look. We're striving to find something we think uh, is deep. I'll never forget my Zachind. This one says to me, he said, I want to see, I want to see great things of Yah. He left me and went to the church of God. 
And yet when he saw the racism and the prejudice there, he was broken. They destroyed him there. That he literally gave up on his God. You understand? He said, when I went there and saw how they did and how the segregation, he said, man, he got a degree and all of that. But he said to me one day, Zach, and he said, I want to see some mighty work. I want to see the God raise. I said, my friend, you see it here. Cry! I say, you were dead and trespasses in your wickedness and your sin. Now, life of the testimony of God should all of our ignorance has raised you to life. He turned against me. He turned against me. It's amazing that I had him to come back and preach among us, but he would not let me come and preach among that house that he was over. You understand? They don't know the power of him. Everyone is eating their own bread. Is there anything in Torah that complies with that? Every man is seeking his own. There's a way that seems right to man. All the ways of a man are pure in his own sight. But Yah ponders, he weighs. Did he not say they're going to weigh the bread? And Yah ponders, he weighs. He balanced the ruach of man. That's why we need laborers, men not to lay on their buttocks and eat, but men to labor in the Torah and to bring us excellent understanding. We need that, Yisra'ya. We need that. There are folks in their homes are being blessed. We don't beg for offering. They will not send one damn nickel. But they take it, they're offering to Mr. Walmart. Make them dirty bastards of his rich. They're all worth $30 billion, and them dirty bastards, you think uh, that if Shibonka down there in the ghettos needs a, a, pair, a, a pair of drawers for a baby, they're going to say, well, give Shibonka some drawers. Dirty bastards. That's why the lad is so evil. Shalomo knew that. He said there's a so evil in the land, mainly wages kept back by the owners to their own destruction. It's evil in the land, Yisrael. It's an evilness in the land. And they rob and they pillage from the little individual. And the reason they do it because we, even Yisrael as a nation, they won't even uh, consummate their brotherhood with each other. You got them ignorant individuals living in the large cities. Why don't they get together and buy an apartment building? And the very ones they call Gentiles, they're buying and renting from them. Why don't they create their own bakeries? It can be done. It's not that difficult. Why don't they do that? Tell me why. Or they thinking about getting four, five, six, seven wives. Pumping out some babies. But they're not thinking about the house of Yisrael, y'all. That's why y'all commands us to love our neighbor. Who is our rear? We were not neighbors with the world. He said, love your neighbor. Ahab your neighbor. Who was our neighbor? Yisrael. As you love yourself. That's what we must do. Until we learn how to love Yisrael. We can't love no strangers. And that's why the whore taught us. Oh I love everybody. You didn't give a damn about nobody. Because this whore didn't give a damn. It didn't give a damn about Shabanka down there in the neighborhood. If she didn't pay her tithes. Hell that wicked dog would rid her out. You folks ain't paying your tithes and your offerings. I want to show you why you curse. Turn here to Malachi. You curse with the curse. You want to understand why the wine is of him and not open to you. This is what the Lord says. And yet the book of Malachi says, I say to you, Kohim, if you do not give honor unto my name, you will curse these dirty bastards. They will drive them. Sure they will. It's right to give. It's right to give your offerings. Uh, and Yah has not done away with tithes. And I don't give a damn what these bastards say. We just don't beg. Set an offering. Hallelujah. I'm going to finish here. I'm tired. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Again, he says in verse 26, And what I have broken, I have shabam, the staff of your bread, ten women shall bake bread in their own ovens, and they shall deliver you your bread against my weight, and you shall eat, and you're not going to be satisfied. Shabbat. 27. And if you will not, he says this, this is profound utterance, and if you will not, for all this, he said, after I've done all this, after I've shown you this revelation, after I open up to you the wisdom of my knowledge, he said, and if you will not after all this hearken, listen, obey me, but walk heri contrary to me, Yah says, you damn fool, he says, if you will not. He said, then I will walk contrary to you now this time. He said, also, he says, in my chemach, in my fury. 
in the heat of my agony, my intense hatred, the fire of my nostrils, my af, my nose shall spread. He said, then I'm going to walk contrary to you. Not just contrary, being hostile. I will show you the power of my desolation. He said, I will walk contrary. I will walk in my fury. And I, even I, he said, I will your shot in his fury now. Correct me, Yah, in thy mishpat, and not in your anger, unless you bring me to nothing. And once your correction is anger, you're brought to nothing. You will not rise up. Listen to what he says. He says, and I will, Yosha, you seven times for your sins, always sin. He said, and you shall eat. He said, you shall uh, achal. You shall eat, you shall devour, you shall consume, you shall eat the bazaar, the flesh of who? Your sons. They're eating the flesh of their sons. He said, you're going to eat the flesh of your sons and the flesh of your daughters. We're coming to a time that has never been like a time and never since and shall be. They're selling the sons and the daughters for nothing today. For some shekels. They say, baby, shake your eyes. Sleep with everything that moves. Man be a dog. Become recognizable. What a nation would pay a dirty slut. This whore in Atlanta that kills her baby, throws it in the woods. No retrition in this whore out of hell. The media marvel at her and make, makes her a millionaire. What a damn twisted nation. When this slutty whore there in Italy butcher and cut pieces of the heart to eat. And yet the media is in a frenzy for this slut. And it says today she's with her new boyfriend. This dirty hoe. This dirty hoe. And she's going to make four million dollars on a book deal. And we sit back as though, okay, that's okay. Nah, she don't be hating on nobody. You yes, said I hated Esau. Yeah. I'm gonna kill the bastard. There's no right or any inheritance in my kingdom for Esau. That's what he said. And yet you raise up a whore. That's why our daughters, you're selling their flesh to Horam. You're selling the son, you raise up a whore, give her four million dollars. You take this little silly grinning woman out of Alaska and talks about Mr. Barack Hussein Obama. He wants, uh, he wants to bring us uh, into, this, uh, into this form of uh, socialist government. And hell, Alaska has always had a socialist system uh, whereby everyone takes uh, or enjoy the process of the gas. And she has a dirty little hoe in her house, a slut, that she's bringing her boyfriend. He pumps her damn baby in her. And they bring her for national prominence, uh, and she's serenaded by the world. Uh, she is a spokesman for young girls today. She's a damn slut. True. I can take you to Charlotte to the hood, uh, and I can get Shaboka, uh, and she can give you a testimony more and more real than that damn slut. Uh, and you make her rich $20,000 uh, to hear an uneducated, belligerent slut uh, speak to your daughters uh, to pull out that damned uh, Abominable thing in their minds. Uh, what a damn damnation. Yeah. Yet they will not raise up a pure little Beth Ula, a virgin. A daughter that is a high yellow woman of strength that maintains her house. But they will raise up these dirty sluts. And then they will let this Amanda, this, uh, this whore down here, uh, Kelly, this whore in Atlanta walk free. If that had been Sharuka Bell, she'd have been imprisoned 50 years, no, 200 years plus 10 life sentences, uh, no possibility of parole. Hell, whether she did it or not, this is the imbalance of what we call a just system. It is not a just system. It is a damn corrupt system. It is vile. There's only one true system. Uh, it is predicated upon the misva, the statutes, uh, the ordinance of Almighty Yah. Without that, we have no just system. When a man is not operating in that system uh, and that mindset, he will not do justly by law. You got money, you can be just like Amanda. You will rise up and you will not go to prison. 
You will have those working for you with Shabaka, her social environment, her educational experience, and everything about her, her looks, the pigmentation of her skin works against her. And when that vile thing calls itself a judge, look upon her without mercy, say, go to hell, slut. I put you in prison for 50 years plus, uh, plus uh, that to run con- concurrent with 50 more years, uh, to run concurrent with 50 more years. They, they, they do it in a way where you know Shabonk is not getting out. And she has deep contrition. And that slut there and this Amanda whore, they're millionaires and they're riding around in limousine charter service. Uh, they're flying in private jets. And Shabonk doesn't even have bread for her babies to eat. And no one gives a damn about Shabonka. They don't give a damn about her. She's maligned. Castrated and destroyed. Yeah, you a little ho Shabonka, but that's all right, baby. Y'all's going to come on over here. You're all right. Hallelujah. This abomination that makes desolate. Things that are vile in our minds, that are the capstone of our mind, and that the building blocks of our mind, things that are against Yah, it makes us desolate. No life. Our words are destructive. Our attitude is destructive. Our habits are destructive. Our actions are destructive, Yisrael. Yah says, you're going to eat the flesh of your sons and your flesh of your daughters. You shall eat. He does not say, he used the word achal. That is to devour, to eat, to consume. Yah says, you're going to eat the flesh of your babies. God tells us in that time that a mother shall sodden her baby. Come on, that little pretty fat thing there, being sodden with water, soaked, and eaten. That which is in the womb, it comes out, it is sodden, fried, and eaten. Oh, that's not so. Yeah, but we will say that there are those that are cannibals in other parts of the world, in Africa, especially on that continent. And even through the propaganda, the propagandizing, we've been taught, well, they eat the pygmies, they eat the flesh. No, that's not, that's not what it was about. When we would die, their ancestors, they would take a little piece of the flesh and eat that to say that this is our connection with them. But they were not sitting there eating no damn flesh bodies like, like these wicked dogs in this nation. They butcher and they eat and they fry and they cook up the flesh. That's not how they did it. And we have been, uh, we are so damn gullible, we hear something, oh, 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 oh. And our minds are trained in such a way that we're stupid. Yisraelis are stupid people. We like to think that we are masters of everything and we are not. Oh, I know I'm ignorant. And I have no bones to pick with that. I never forget when I worked the last place I worked. I worked uh, with this engineer. His name was John Parach. He was a big boy too. He played football for, 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 for Purdue and he played football for our. He, that boy was big. Hey, he was tall. He was big. Of course, when he, I would sit down in his office, I would make his cheeks red as, as, as berries, you understand. And so I would tell them, I said, I'm an ignorant man. I, I don't know. Oh, you're not ignorant, Dave Roberts. I said, look, man, don't try to flatter me. I said, you're ignorant too. I said, you may have the expertise in, uh, in a certain sphere or a, a certain uh, place in life, and you have skills or the skill sets uh, to manipulate and to operate within that confinement. But hell, I said, I tell you what, I can build a house. Can you do that? All right, then, you're ignorant too. There are things that you're ignorant of, man. So stop it. Well, because I would say that, then they were willing to teach me what they knew. You understand? It's just the boastful and the pride can ne- pride for man that can never learn anything. Because he thinks he knows everything. I'm ignorant. What's wrong with that? Oh, David Roberts, you, you're a to Shut your mouth, man. Stop it. Hallelujah. Closing out here. They're going to eat their sons and their daughters. You know that must be a depraved mind to eat your child. You know that's got to be a mind that is filled with every kind of unclean, abominable nidah there is. That one will sod their own baby and eat it. He's talking about Yisra'ya here. He said, I will shamad. Verse 30. I will destroy your heart. I'm going to bring down T.D. Jakes. I'm going to bring down these whore temples. I'm going to bring down the Catholic whore house. I'm going to bring down Judaism. I'm going to bring down Islam. Did not Israel go when they were scattered and learned the ways of the heathens? They have learned Judaism. They have learned, uh, they have learned Hinduism. They have learned yoga. They have learned all of that. 
He said, I'm going to tear down your high places. Y'all says, I'm going to cut down your images. I'm going to cast your carcasses, your dead bodies upon the carcasses of your gilul. I'm going to take your damn filthy bodies. And since you have not offered unto me at the time when the daily offering is cut off from the house of Yah, then you know that the abomination of desolation already works, Israel. Y'all said, you're dead. You're trespasses and sin. You are dead body. When sin is finished, it brings for death. I'm going to take your damn dead corpse and I'm going to put it on your dead idol and see if it will raise you up. That's what Yah says. He's bad to the bone, as they would say. He's not playing. You can sit and we can sport all we want to. Ah, oh, he doesn't mean that. He, 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 he. Say it all you want to. It's a terrible thing to fall into hands of the Most High. He crushes you. He made us. It is he that made us, not ourselves. What can the chair say to the one that made it? What can we say to him? We let him do the talking. We do the listening. Hallelujah. Yah says in verse 30, again, verse 31, I will make your cities to be Hana. I will make them to be ruins. Are the cities in ruins today? I will never forget the last time I went to Baltimore with Zachin Dawid there. I was appalled at my issue. I said, baby, look at this. And I'm not talking about a block. I mean blocks and blocks and blocks and blocks and miles of destitutes. And my heart wept. I said to her, I said, wife, I could take a city block of this community. And if they, the government, was right, I could revitalize this in two or three years and have all the men working right here. I could create the enterprise. I can do it. I know how to do it. The kids don't even have hell ball field to go play ball. Child must exercise and ex expend that energy. I went by a park as I was telling my Ach Shemri. I saw some ball players out there, but of course, if they had a court like we have an NBA side, that's a court out there, like that. I saw this little rinky-dink, and, and there were, I mean, throngs of men there. And you can tell. If you went down there, you didn't get up again. You didn't get up. Nothing. The women were empty and walking. I saw throngs of grown women, 30, 40. You could tell, just walking. Wow. Give me four city blocks in a square. And I lay it down. If I don't revive it in three years, it is not operable. It is not a cohesive community. If there's not change, there's not counsel, there's not work. I don't have a billion dollars, but I give you a billion dollars. You understand? That's how Yah wanted Israel Yah, to live. Counsel. There's inheritance, a law. When the damn wicked son won't kick him out, get out. You're not going to do that here. Go out. Get out. The daughter wants to act like a whore. You're not going to do it here. We coddle that today. We give them reason to do what they're doing. I won't do it. Hallelujah. He said, I will make your sister, your city's harbam, and bring your mikdash to shamaim, to desolation, the place of offering. There will be no offering that will bring it to desolation, destructiveness. He says, and I will not smell the fragrance of your sweet order or your nichoash, your soothing tranquility of your quietness of your offering. Verse 32. And this is what Yah says, I will bring the erech, the land, into shamim, into great desolation, to ruins, to death. I will bring it into land, into desolation. He says, and your, oh, oh yeah, if your enemies, those that are hostile toward you, which dwell therein shall be astonished. They shall be shamed. They shall be appalled. They shall be stupefied at your conditions. They will look and say, is this the one that brought them out? Is this the one? Are these the people they say they know? Yah. He said, they're going to be appalled at your conditions. Listen. And Yah did not say in the next verse, I will put. He says, I will zakah. I will scatter. I will cause life. Or I will raise up life in you. And then I will comfort. Now this almost sounds insane here. Listen now. 
He says, I will, I will raise you up. I will comfort you. But look what he says. For what? You're going to comfort us? He says, I will scatter you among the heathens. In essence, I will comfort you. And I will draw out the sword after you. And your land shall be shimach ma. You tell me you're going to comfort me. And then you're going to draw out the herep against me. And your land shall be full of death and ruins. He said, you're going to pay seven times for your sins. I have offered the splendor of my excellence for your sin. You rejected that. He said, your land shall be desolate. And your cities, they shall be chava'ah. Then shall the land, only then, Yah says, when I destroy you. He said, only shall the land enjoy the Shabbats, the feast days, the more damn. He says, as long as it lies desolate. Seems kind of strange, doesn't it? As long as there's no life in the land, as long as the land lies desolate, they shall enjoy the Shabbat. You understand the magnitude of Yah's desolation? They shall enjoy the Shabbat. He says, and, and you are in your enemy's land, even then shall the land rust, even in the land of the enemy, even in a place like America. See, Yah's going to bring it to desolation, whereby there will be no life, there will be no life about your God, about your Lord Jesus, about your Jesus Christ, none of that. He's going to cause desolation, where the land is going to lie in total ruins and chaos. And then you're going to hear the voice, of the redeemed of Yisrael, your crime. You're going to hear that small, quiet voice resonate from, from the ruins of devastation and destruction. And you're going to hear the cry and the offering unto Yah. And you're going to know the zira, the seed of Yisrael, because there shall be an oblation that the ears of Yah shall hear and that his nostrils shall be filled with the fragrance of the testimony of Yahshua. That's the truth. Verse 35. As long as it lies desolate, as long as there is shaming, it shall have rest or Shabbat. Because it did not rest in Yah's Shabbat when you dwell upon it. And upon them that are left, listen, he uses the word Shabbat, those that are left, the few, alive. Nothing is going to escape. He said, those that are left alive of you, I will send faintness, I will send I will send a faintness, a weakness to their hearts. They will be weak, and not only that, they will be soft. No effeminate man is going into the kingdom, whereby his wife dispenses and rules in the house. No, he's not going into the kingdom. He's a soft man. He's an effeminate man. And that's not the way of Yah. Hallelujah. I'm not going to do this. No, I'm ruling this house. You, uh, uh, a man, he rules his house well, not with brutality. He loves his wife. And when the son sees the love of the wife, then it teaches them the love. What a man should have for a woman, the regard and the respect. Children today don't see that. And all they see is the mama. So the boys today, they become as feminine as the woman. So she dispenses into them her ruach and her spirit. When the man walks in the house, then the boy should rise up and will say, Daddy, I will man. When the little daughter see that, oh, he's the, he's the life, he's the strength of the house. She runs out, oh, daddy, hey, daddy, 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 daddy. See, when he walks in the house and mommy's hostile, hell, the children are going to be that way. Because they see her actions and say, no, I, 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 I ain't stuck, no, yeah, I ain't talking about that. No, you, you, you're on the my roof, woman. You're going with me. And you're going to do it right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Upon those that shall be left, verse 36, Yah says, I'm going to send faintness or this murach in their levim, in the land of their enemies. He says, listen, he said, even the sound of the shaking of the leaf shall chase them. If they hear a leaf ruffle, the faintest of things is going to cause them to run. Men today with the least of situation because of the abomination of desolation, they have destroyed in their hearts their conscience the responsibility of being a man, being the husband, to take care of their children, and to look after their wives. They're weak. And the least little problem arise, they run and hide. That's what they do, Yisrael. He said, and they shall flee as fleeing from a sword. And they shall fall when none pursue. They're going to fall down. And they're not going to get up. And they shall fall one upon another. As there 
were before a sword when none pursue. He said, and they shall have no tichuma, no power, no kalach, no strength. They shall have no power at all, no ability to stand before their enemies. Now that's weakness there. Righteous man that falls down before the wicked, little is his strength. He has no strength. You fall down before this abominable, filthy world. You give in to her mandates. Come on, Mr. Barack Hussein Obama, you're wrong to try to mandate others that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, they accept faggots and, and legislate laws for men to get married. That's a damn lie. You're wrong, Mr. Obama. There's nothing but filth legislated from this greedy damn America. You're wrong. When you, when you want equal ri marriage rights, hell, what, what do you mean equal rights? Uh, the man and the woman, they are as equal, uh, uh, equals in their, uh, in their cohabitation, in their marriage. Not two damn men and two women. And they pour this in the school books for your babies. They don't even know the difference between a man and a woman. That's, that's sickening. Man, that's insane. And you give your babies to that man? That's crazy. That's wild, man. That's not, yeah. That's insane. They're putting that in your babies. Teach me his own. No, that's not teach me his own. Yah says it's a vile abomination. The establishing the very pillars of abomination in your children's mind is not if a man sleep with a woman like, like a, if a man sleep with another man like womankind, is that an abomination? If a woman sleep with a woman like with mankind, is that an abomination? If a woman sleeps with an animal, is that an abomination? If a man sleep with a pig, is that an abomination? These things are an abomination. If a woman dressed like a man, is an abomination. And these are the strong pillars of abomination or this abomination that make it desolate uh, that we don't give a damn what Yah says. And they're teaching your babies that they're instructing them that uh, that's why the parents go to eat their babies. Their mothers that kill their babies, they eat them up. They say, well, I hate you. Uh, come on. You said, right, my Emma. All right, you've been around longer than any of us. If no one else says, right, I don't care. Your testimony is enough. He said, you won't be able to stand before your enemies. And then he says in verse 38 and 39, I'm going to close. He says, and you shall perish. You shall be exterminated. You shall die. You shall abide. You shall perish among the goem, the heathens. We're dying among this heathenistic nature, nation. We're dying of the principles of Yah. We're dying. He said, and the land of your enemies shall eat you up. Not only physically, but spiritually as well, we've been eaten up in this nation. And not only the identity or our identity with Yah, there is no identity. There is no fruit in us that identify with Yah. That is the identity of Yah, the fruit. That is the identity of Yah. Because there are many deceivers among us, and there are many that have slid the end. They look like you, they talk like you, and they act like you. That doesn't mean that they are the house of Yisrael, Yah. There are many deceivers. And this is what the prophecy here, when this desolation, when this abomination that makes desolate, when there's no conscience of Yah, you won't even have no true identity with Yah, Yisra, Yah. And the last verse, verse 39, and they that are left, even the few, that's why he must, Yoshach, a remnant, the Bokhir, this is a small fragment of the Elag, and they that are left of you, he says they shall mocha, they shall pine, they shall rot, their heart shall be as rottenness of nida. They shall pine away in what? Their iniquity. You're going to die. And iniquity is a perverted, abominable, wicked mind. And their iniquity in your enemy's land. And also in the iniquity of the avat shall they pine away with them. I'm going to stop there. The abomination that maketh desolate. When there are habitual practices in our lives that Yah calls abominable and vile, detestable before him. And we give credence unto that. It began to make us void. It began to cause us to become less comprehensive of the ways of Yah, the way of Torah life, that we delight in that Israel. Yah. Let us rejoice in Yahshua's name. And told Yah for all that he grants unto us as a nation of people, that he grants unto us his chayil, his chayil, his life, which is only in the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yabarak, you all, you that have joined us, may he strengthen you, may he cause your heart to rejoice greatly in the knowledge of Yahshua. This is his Shabbaton. 
Let us rejoice in this and be exceedingly glad. We greet you all our friends and our listeners, you that are listening from wherever in the world, in the United States. We greet you all in Yeshua's mighty name. May his riches overpower you, overtake you, and cause you to be strengthened. Do help us in this broadcast. It costs to be on the live stream and to do what we do. We're always trying to improve. Send an offering, Yisraya. Quit giving your offerings to Kmart and Walmart, all right? And feeding the God of your belly, the greed of your lusts. Quit doing that. Hallelujah. May he strengthen you all. Be encouraged, Yisraya. As the old ones say, be. Yeah. Be encouraged. Yeah, yeah. Say it that way. Well, that's not proper protocol of, of linguists. Go to hell, man. I say like Granny Beza. Beza. Beza courage. How about that, fool? Hallelujah. They think that they're gifted. They don't have anything. We have the gift. The gemu'el, the gift of Yah. And that gift is Yahshua Hamashiach. So let us, Yisrael, let us continue to offer the offering. Don't allow that to be taken from our bosom. The offering of acceptance unto Yah. And then that is that we offer continuously Toda unto Yah. And the reason we offer that because we know what he has written in our bosom. He said, in that day I shall hatab, write my Torah in the heart, the mind, the inward part of Yisraya. And so in the life of his Ruach testify, you give Toda. Toda Yah for all things in Yahshua's mighty name. Be strengthened this day, Yisraya, and may Yah uphold you in all that he desire for you to walk in. And that is Torah. In your sure mighty name. Let us stand to our feet. I am wore out. Hallelujah. I'm so dehydrated. Hallelujah. I do that when that song that they sing more than a conqueror, that's my victory song. That pumps some energy in me. I don't care what I'm doing. If I'm listening to that, man, I get inspired. It does something to me. And I, I get to singing and I get crazy in my little office. All right. In all things we do, Barak, you, yeah, for your sure. For your great blessings today, heal us. We need your healing. Touch your people and strengthen. We pray for all your people. We pray for our Ach and our Zakin, Yeshara, and touch his body. And all those that need a healing, touch our Hope Mariana and our, uh, uh, our Iman there, uh, Miriam uh, there in, in, in Maryland, and Herlach. We pray for her, the strength of her bosom, and all of your people. Guide us and heal us all. We need thee above all. I need you and your people. We need you. Touch us all and strengthen. Give us knowledge, wisdom, and your imad. Feed us. Restore us this day that we may rest. We may have this shobach. Rest in your sure. We ask these riches of your blessings. In your sure's mighty name. And with our love, look upon Achot Blant and her family. In Yahshua's name we shout hallelujah. 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 Amen. Yabra.